All right, in this video, we're gonna take that simplified head and go, go a step further and make it a little bit more humanoid. So we talked about starting with the oval, right? Head, neck, shoulders. and vertical and horizontal crosshairs, all right? All right, so that's fine as a beginning place to really help us again with just, just with the gesture of the head, what it's doing, okay? But this is much too simplified a form to start then building um, complex details on top of, like we don't wanna start getting really detailed about eyes and noses and stuff on, on something like this. It's just too simple. We've gotta do, got do a few things to bring the head a little bit more into, um, you know, into the realm of, of, of looking like a human head. And um, the idea that I'm gonna give you is an idea called a ball and plane, which is taking this simple, um, single uh, oval shape and dividing it into, into two shapes. So when you look at the human head, the top part is more rounded, the bottom part is more angular. So that's the idea of the ball and plane is to separate into those two, um, kind of distinctive component parts. So the top part here, we would build a circular form into. And the bottom part, we're gonna break down into angles, sort of going back to the angular idea. And the angles that we wanna catch are from the cheekbones, coming down, breaking into the jaw, and then, um, and then squaring off the chin. So it would go like this. It would come straight down from the cheekbones on either side then breaking in towards the chin, and then the chin squares off. Okay, so not, not bringing it to a point, but seeing the chin as like a unit that squares off and moves up to, so here we've got the, here we've got the chin, here we've got the jaw, and up to the cheekbones here. So this is still a very generalized form. It could be anybody, but this, um, this is just a, a very um, sort of easy and quick step that kind of bridges the gap from that simple ovoid uh, oval form to the next step, which is going to be angular drawing. So, but this is a really nice step to take with, with the figure and still keep things pretty, keeps things pretty simple and um, and we can start plotting uh, lines, sort of generalized lines for the features, which I'll go over in the next video, um, the proportions for the, for the features. Now, a subtlety of this is that the head from the front is a different proportion than the head from the side. So the head from the front, I said, fits into a, about a two by three rectangle. From the side, it approaches a square a little bit more in that our head sort of gets longer as we go to the, to the profile. So when you use this ball and plane idea, here I've drawn it as a circle. But if I started off and said, well, this head is turned relative to me, like this. So here the person's head is, is turned. So with the ball and plane idea, I don't want to sort of work within this oval. I want to start expanding the oval with that ball idea. So in other words, that, uh, that circular ball would become a little bit more oval, and I would, bring it, I would bring it past that point. If I bring it in here, it's just not going to look like a human head if I stick within the oval. So the oval starts expanding. This back part of your head starts getting wider as you go around to the profile. So I've got to do, I've got to do something at the ball and plane level to start expanding that oval out and then I can do the same thing here. Now you also might find that you know when you get into say uh, when you get into a, a, like a three-quarter position like this not all of these angles may apply so in three quarters I may have you know I may have the jaw over here but I might not over here might not have it over here. I might just have a straight line coming, coming right down to the chin. So you just have to look at the model and you have to gauge, is that head turned away from me enough so that I wouldn't see that, that, far, um, that far jawline. The other thing you want to do at this point is you want to start adjusting your, um, your neck and your shoulder line. So 
The, the neck, the side of the neck, there's just a muscle called the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which comes from behind the ear. So you always want to think of this line as coming from behind, behind this ear. So I might have to, like in three quarters, I might have to move this shape out a little bit so that, again, the head doesn't look like a lollipop sitting on a, on a stick. And on this side, you might, and again, by looking at the model, you can tell maybe that line of the neck on the other side comes inside the limit of the chin with the head turned that way. So those are, those are little adjustments that you can make that just, that make this simplified form a little bit more responsive to what you're, to what you're actually looking at and, um, and prepares you a little bit better for the next step.